Hello everyone and welcome to the Vibration Lab. In this short video, we are going to understand what is an oscilloscope. You can see here, this is my oscilloscope and today I am going to demonstrate how we can measure the data in the oscilloscope. I am having a signal generator. Using the signal generator, I am going to feed a harmonic signal into my oscilloscope. You can see here that a sine wave is coming on the screen of this uh, oscilloscope and that is basically I have given a harmonic signal. At the end of this video, we are going to see how we can measure accelerometer data. So let's try to understand what are the different functions of this oscilloscope. This is our typical oscilloscope. On the right side of my oscilloscope, there are different buttons. On the left side, a display is given. On the top of the display, at this point, you can see that what is the time scale, what is the cursor position. I am going to explain this later on. At the same time, you can see that something is written which is showing that m is equal to 1 second. That means this one block of the display is of 1 second. Here you can see that this is channel 100 millivolt. That means it is having 100 millivolt on the vertical scale. When I am going to see the right side of the oscilloscope panel, there are multiple buttons. But we are going to understand some basic functions so that we will be able to measure the data. So the first thing I need to put some input in my oscilloscope and for that I am going to use a signal generator. So this is my signal generator. You can see here two channels on my signal generator. I am connecting my cable with channel 1 and this is a BNC cable, a typical BNC cable. This is the shape of your BNC cable which are generally used for such instruments. Here you can see that this is the display of uh, your signal generator but here I am not going to explain signal generator in too much detail. What I am going to tell you that I am going to use a signal which will be having a frequency of 40 hertz and the amplitude will be of 4 500 millivolt. So let me set the frequency and the amplitude and for that I am going to press the frequency button. This frequency button I am setting and I am putting 40 here and I am selecting the hertz so my signal will be of 40 hertz. Similarly I am going to select the amplitude button I am going to set 500. So this is the setup where the frequency and the amplitude is of 50 hertz, uh, 40 hertz and 500 millivolt. I am going to start my channel and then I am using this cable to input the data in my oscilloscope. So this is our oscilloscope and I am going to input the data in channel 1. The moment I will insert the cable, the signal is now coming on the screen but I am not able to see what exactly coming because the horizontal and vertical scales are not properly set. So that we need to understand what are these different buttons. So let's start with the first that is the connection and here the BNC cable is connected the, with the channel 1. So this is the connection. Similarly, I am having channel 2. Above that, I am having two knobs. These two knobs are basically to set the signal on the display. That means if I am rotating the knob, actually I am going to move the signal up and down. These, these knob, knobs are not actually required when you are measuring the data unless the data is having some um, shift. Then we are having these two buttons 1 and 2. These two buttons are showing that the, whether the channel 1 is on or off. If I am going to press it, now nothing is nothing will come on the screen because now the channel has off. If I am going to press it again, now the signals are coming because channel 1 is on. Still channel 2 is off. If I am going to press this button, both the signals are coming but as nothing is connected to channel 2, the pink line is there but the signals are not there. If I am going to remove the cable from here and I am going to add the cable here, then the something is coming on the uh, pink or violet line and nothing is coming for the yellow line. So let's go back and again connect the signal with the channel 1 input and let's off the channel 2. So this is my signal which is there on the screen and now I have to understand how we can visualize the signal in a proper way. So for that you can see here these are the two buttons which are showing the vertical scale. It is written here that these are the vertical setup and this is the horizontal. Vertical means when I am going to rotate this knob which is corresponding to channel 1, I will be able to change the resolution of my vertical scale. So you can see here, see here that is now it is 500 millivolt. If I am going to change this resolution, let's change it to some 200 millivolt. Now you can see that it is now having a larger display or if I have rotated it further, I am having a 100 millivolt resolution and this is my signal. Similarly, when you will go read it, it is showing the one second data. That means one block is of one second. I am going to rotate the horizontal knob. When I will rotate the horizontal knob, the resolution will change. You can see now it is 500 millivolt. Further, I am going to rotate it. It is coming as a 250 millivolt. 
then 100 millivolt and now it is at set at the 50 milli sorry millisecond. You can see now I will be able to see a sine wave now if I will further enhance it it is 25 millisecond. So one block is of 25 millisecond and now I am able to see the wave which is coming in my signal and I know that this is a sine wave of 40 hertz as well as 500 millivolt peak to peak amplitude. So up to this point I have just shown that how we can connect the cable, how we can set the horizontal and vertical scale and these are the two buttons to on and off your channel. Now I am uh, now I am going to display how you can measure the signal and for that what you need to do there is a cursor button is here. When I am going to press the cursor button a display will be here and on this display I have to set. So you can see that the first is the manual. If I am going to press this first button you can see there are three things that is manual, track and auto. If I will rotate this knob I can select either of this and I am again fixing it to the manual and I am once I am pressing this knob it has fixed to the manual measurement. The second button is showing the time value here. So if I am going to press it that means either I can measure the voltage, voltage means by default it is vertical scale or time means by default horizontal scale. And you can see here these are the two cursor available. I have to fix the cursor so that I will be able to check the what value I am going to measure. Then I am having source, source is showing channel 1 that means currently the data is from channel 1. You can change it, you can go to channel 2 or other value, math is there that is the function and later on we will understand what is the meaning of this math but currently I am fixing it to the channel 1 and my data is already in channel 1. Then I am having a cursor A and cursor B button. So let's start with the cursor A. So currently I have selected cursor A and again I am going back to this knob. This knob is really very important. If I am going to rotate this, my cursor is moving on the screen and let's fix the cursor on one of the peak value. So I have fixed the cursor here that is at the peak value and if I want to measure the time period of this wave, what I need to do, I have to move the second cursor to the next peak. So I am going to select the cursor B now and now the control is gone to the uh, cursor B and I am able to rotate the cursor and I am going to fix it on the second peak. Sometime what will happen? You will find only one cursor on the screen but the second cursor will not be there and that is why because if you are going to change the horizontal scale, the cursor will move away from the display. So what you need to do at that time, you have to rotate the knob continuously so that the cursor will again come back to your display section. Currently I have fixed the cursor on the two peak and you can see when you will see and you will find here what is there. This delta T is 25 millisecond, 1 by delta T is 40 hertz. That means whatever I am sending to the signal uh, to the oscilloscope I am able to measure. The position of cursor A and cursor B are already given that is some 43 and 68 but that is not important. What is important? What is the time period and what is the frequency? Sometime you will not be able to pick the peak. So what you need to do that time? You can further increase the resolution of the horizontal scale. So here I can again rotate the cursor and I can put the cursor on a different position so that I I will be able to pick the peaks. This is my one cursor and this is my another second cursor. I am moving the cursor and I am fixing it here. So again you can see that I have fixed the cursor at two peaks and I am able to see the frequency of my signal. If I am interested to measure the amplitude of my signal, what I need to do? You can see here that I have selected the time. Instead of time I am going to press the button and now it is showing the voltage. That means I am able to see the vertical scale now. And you can also check that this cursor has orientation of this cursor has changed and now it is in the horizontal uh, position. So I am going to rotate the cursor and I am going to fix the cursor at the top. Then I am again changing the cursor to the cursor B and I am removing it. And you can see here that now your data is something around 504. But 504 is a good enough value and I, it is giving me an idea that the signal is of having an amplitude of 500 millivolt peak to peak and the frequency of the signal is 40. As I said in the beginning, now I am going to demonstrate you how we can measure the vibration signal using oscilloscope and for that again I am removing my cable. The moment I will remove the cable, nothing is coming on the screen and I am connecting our accelerometer which we have developed in our laboratory. So this is my accelerometer. And when I am going to move my hand, I will expect that something will come on the screen. 
so let me connect my accelerometer with the oscilloscope and again i am using the channel 1 so when i am connecting the oscilloscope with the channel 1 now something something is coming on the screen but actually i am not able to understand what is there if i am going to move my hand then again the wave is changing but still i am not able to uh, understand what is that why it is happening it is happening because whenever you are taking the data you must see what is the horizontal and the vertical scale and suppose you are new with the oscilloscope what should be the first thing you will do with your oscilloscope you will go and you will see this button this is default setup the moment i will press the default setup the oscilloscope will start working and oscilloscope by itself set some data but what happened when you are going to press the default button and if you will see the time scale it is showing 500 microsecond that means one block of 500 microsecond and that is not going to help you if the signal is having a larger time period or very small frequency and similarly the voltage value is 1 volt so generally what I do I select a voltage value of let 100 millivolt so that I will be understand that whether the data is actually there or not at the same time I am going to change my horizontal scale and I am going to set it to let some value 100 millisecond so now the data is there on the screen 100 millisecond is the horizontal uh, resolution and 100 millivolt is the vertical resolution and let's try to take the again something is now there because I am moving my hand and some waves are coming but these are continuously changing and I am not able to measure it unless I am not going to fix it so what I will do again I am just reducing first my vertical scale so let it is 500 millivolt so that I will not be able to see the noise in my signal and let I am moving my head you see something is coming on the screen and let us I am interested to find what is the amplitude of this so what amplitude is not properly coming so let again change it to 200 millivolt and this is my signal you know if you want to measure the signal you need to freeze the signal on the screen and for that what you need to do here you can see this button this button is showing the run or stop the moment I will press this button whatever is there on the screen is going to be freeze so again I am uh, uh, putting it on and um, this is my signal and let press it so whatever is there on the screen is now fixed and I can use my cursor to get the insight of my data let us I am interested to find what is the difference or the gap between these two peaks so what I need to do for that again I am going to select it in a manual the source is voltage so I am going to change the source because I need I am interested in horizontal scale so it is time now and then I am having my cursor A if I move it my cursor A is moving so this is my cursor A and I am fixing my cursor A on this peak first peak of this wave so this is the first position when I am going to select the cursor B as I said you are not able to see where the cursor B it is actually not there on the screen so you need to rotate the knob in opposite direction or you will say that you are going to rotate the knob towards the cursor 1 so that the cursor B will come and now it is coming it is coming slowly slowly it was not at the position so if it is coming and then you can see that the cursor is coming here and uh, yes I hope positioned it and you can see on the screen that this time value is 222 millisecond or 4.5 hertz that means when I was moving my hand the frequency of my vibration was around 4.5 hertz great I can move my hand with the 4.5 hertz frequency so again I am showing you that I am changing it and I am moving my hand and you can see that this is the vibration data coming in fact you can use this accelerometer to measure many things in my next video I am going to tell you that how we can measure the vibration of a cantilever beam so I hope this small demonstration helped you how you can check data in oscilloscope and what are the different functions of your oscilloscope. In next class we will see how we can measure vibration signal using oscilloscope. Thank you.